All right. Now we are going to go to, let's see here. We are going to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. There's a reason I'm reading this. This particular message is from both perspectives, the victim and the perpetrators. And I'm going to tell you all, before any of you start to think of yourself as a victim or a perpetrator, we are all both. Remember that. We're all both at any given moment. And let me warn you about something before I get started reading. I want to let you know that there is coming a time, it's here now, where the demons are unleashing all kind of tricks, all kind of games on us. They're pulling out little emotional strings, yanking out cords, pulling out coats, messing with our minds. And they are popping our mouths open and popping that box open so all of our jacks can jump out the box at any given moment. We have got to watch and pray, be aware, and be in total self-control. Because at any given moment, we can be the weapon in Satan's hands. And in any given moment, we can be the ones receiving the dart straight through our hearts by one of our brothers or sisters in Christ, by the leaders, by followers, by family members, by people we don't even know. And when things start to jump off, we're wondering, where did that come from? Well, remember what the word says. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll start at 7, because we forget this fact. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Here's a warning. We as the body of Christ and God's church of love, especially, we have to be very, very careful because Satan is trying to tear this ministry down. I just want you to know that. Satan is trying to tear the ministry down and Satan is trying to tear it apart. But anything God does, Satan is on the rampage to kill, steal, and destroy but I put him on notice. It ain't happening here. Just like Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the kingdom of God. Well, I say and decree the gates of hell will not prevail against God's church of love online in Jesus's name. Now, this is what I want you to be aware of. Be very leery. Satan is an accuser of the brethren. Remember that. Not only is Satan an accuser of the brethren, Satan is the author of confusion. And Satan is the father of lies. And we may have all things going on at the same time. Confusion, lies, you hear me? And destruction. See, Satan wants to pull this ministry down. And we all have to be very, very careful. Let me tell you the things that I saw God saying to me that we are going to experience if we're not careful. Feelings being hurt when there is no intentional attack. We'll be seeing things hearing things that didn't get said. Now, what the Lord gave me right before we came online, right before we came online, I worked with deaf people years ago. And the Lord showed me, he brought to my mind what happens when there are areas in our lives where there's a certain level of deafness. And sometimes we are deaf in spirit. 
and we misunderstand, we misread, we misconstrue what we're hearing. And what happens is confusion, strife, hurt feelings, misunderstandings, defensiveness where there's no need. Listen to this. When a person is hard of hearing, not completely deaf, hard of hearing, that's what I'm dealing with. And there are many of us that have moments of being hard of hearing. When a deaf person is hard of hearing, they not only have a difficulty hearing sounds, they also can have a difficulty deciphering sounds. So if I say, pick up the bat, somebody might hear what I said and think I said, boy, that woman sure is picking up weight and getting fat. Think about it. We have to really, really pray against the onslaught of the enemy wreaking havoc and causing confusion in the body of Christ, especially in our church family. We have to be careful. We have to be careful of cliques forming in our, in our group too. Now, I know there are things that happen as a result of age, age differences. We get that. Half of y'all don't want to talk to Lynn and half y'all don't want to talk to me. We get that. Me and Lynn, you know, we used to be in the old folks in the group. No problem. You know, we'll call her Viviata. She's the oldest. <laughs> no, I'm being funny on that one. But listen to what I'm saying. We have to remember that we are family. And there is nobody in this group that is not a part of our fellowship. And if there's anybody in this group that you would rather not be bothered with, Baby, it's a matter of prayer. There's something not right in paradise. You hear me? You got to keep your heart checked at all times. Sometimes it's a personality thing. But I really feel like we need to hit this thing head on before it knocks us to our knees and buckles us and pulls the, the rug right out from under our ministry. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. You cannot carry resentment in your heart. You got an issue with somebody, give them a call. We are family here. All the numbers are right there available. Give somebody a call and say, did you mean so-and-so when you said blah, blah, blah? Don't sweep it under the blanket, ignore it, and walk around with a chip on your shoulder. That's exactly what the devil wants you to do. If y'all got an issue with me, call me and ask me. Pat, you don't like me? Pat, you got an issue with me? Call me. I don't have any problem with that. I'm not afraid of confrontation. It's good to confront because that is for the sake of reconciliation. Don't ever be afraid of confrontation. It's very healthy when it's done in love and for the right reason. You don't confront somebody to tell them off and give them a piece of your mind. You confront an issue for the sake of healing. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. See, that's the way we do that. We constantly, we're not to kick each other in the teeth. We're not to stab each other in the back when nobody's looking. We are together supposed to kick the devil in the balls and kick him out the ballpark. He's not part of our little love fest. Do you hear me? The Bible warns about people creeping in unawares. Right? And it talks about how they creep in to spoil your feast of charity. We have a feast of charity and we're getting new people constantly. We cannot allow anything to creep in. Anything. Nothing at all. We can't allow it. We have to love each other enough to deal with it to make sure we protect each other. We have to circle the wagons, y'all. That's what we have to do. 
not be mad at each other. We're all human. We're going to misunderstand. We're going to say something that's out of line. We're going to rub each other the wrong way. Deal with it. Deal with it. Don't ignore it and get on the phone. You know what so-and-so said? Did you hear what? Nah, 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 nah. No, no, no. I shut that down in the name of Jesus. You hear me? I don't want any enemies in our family. No enemies. The only enemy we all have together is the devil. That's our enemy, not each other. You hear me? We are not to be each other's enemy, not in the body of Christ. We can't allow it. We can't stand for it. And if I see it, I will front it off. I will nip it in the bud. I'll give somebody a call if I see it. Right now, I'm not talking about anybody in particular. So don't y'all be talking about, she talking about me. She talking about me. She talking about me. No, I ain't talking about nobody in particular. This is the message God gave me. So let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, because this gets deep right here. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I'm just going to read because I want you to hear the whole thing. I'm starting at verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heat to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure is at hand. Is this the right one? Yeah, okay, hang on. It goes a little further. I want to get down to this. Okay, yeah, this is where it's getting deep. Okay. I have, verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas, check this out, you guys. Demas has forsaken me. Having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable for me for the ministry. Mm, mm, mm. Listen. Okay, let me keep going. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Traos and Carpus when thou comest bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. Of whom be thou aware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. Let me tell you, there may be somebody in the group. Well, I don't know who you are who might be withstanding my words, who might be withstanding Lynn's words, who might be withstanding Peter's words, who might be withstanding Lynette's words, who might be withstanding Jeanette's words, Rashad's words, anybody's words, Andrea's. But you have to be very, very careful what you choose to resist. That's what that means when it says withstand, withstood. At my first answer, verse 16, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. 
See, a lot of times when this little stuff starts, you know, jumping off and we get the little nini 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 stuff stirring around in a group or in a church or an organization or a job or wherever you happen to be. Satan is the one at work, y'all. Satan will take your hearing ability, your level of understanding and twist it. As the kids say, don't get it twisted, but we do. We get it twisted. And when we get it twisted, it's like playing post office. I may say I went to the store and I bought two, two pounds of pork chops, but I didn't like pork, so I changed my mind. By the time it gets all the way around 30 people whispering in each other's ear, it could end up being something crazy like I went to the mall and I bought two pairs of shorts. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like shorts, so I traded them in for, for a mini skirt or something crazy like that. It could just totally change. And that's what we have to remember. Satan is an accuser of the brethren. Satan is the author of confusion. And he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He will come to steal the bond that we all have with each other. He will come to steal the love that we have for each other and he will come to destroy this whole ministry but i rebuke him in the name of jesus the buck stops here no the blood of jesus stands between you satan and god's church of love and you will not play one member against another in Jesus' name now i'm not fussing i have been there I have done that. I know what it's like to get a moment in your flesh. I know what it's like to blow it. Romans 7 talks about blowing it left and right. Wanting to do right, but wrong is everywhere with me. Okay, we get that. So we know half the time we don't even realize what we're doing. And that's why I'm saying this, so that we can become more self-aware and more aware of what's happening in our surroundings, what's happening in our conversations, because we want to make sure that we don't give Satan a foothold in the door. What happens in an abusive relationship? A man is searching for the woman that he does not want to let go of. The woman is tired of getting a black eye and broken ribs. So she's ready to flee. And she's in hiding. He finds her and he sweet talks her. And he tries to get her, just crack the door. Let me just talk to you for a minute. And if she's dumb enough to crack the door, it's just like cracking the door in the face of a flood. The force of the water will bust that door wide open. And in comes Satan, hook, line, and sinker, totally in control because you cracked the door to the flesh. You cracked the door to your attitude. You cracked the door to your misunderstandings. You cracked the door to the lies. You cracked the door to those who are in the group to break up friendships accusers of the brethren, sowing discord, causing schisms in the body of Christ. We have to be careful. We have to be so careful. My mother used to tell me, if you can't say anything nice, say nothing at all. Keep your mouth shut. Shut that trap. And I say it like this, don't let your mouth be an anal cavity for the devil. That sounds nasty, picture it. Your mouth turning into the devil's behind when he's ready to spew crap all over the place. Hmm, think about that. You ever see a hippopotamus when he's at the zoo and all the people are standing around gawking at him? He doesn't want to be looked at like that. So he wants to get rid of the people. What does he do? He has a bowel movement and he takes his tail and he fans it everywhere to get rid of all the annoying intruders. Well, that's what Satan does with us. He get mess on you 
and show you how to get mess on me and show me how to get mess on Lynn and show Lynn how to get mess on, on Viviata and show Viviata how to get mess on Jeanette and show Jeanette how to get mess on Rashad and the beat goes on. We have to be very careful not to tolerate when we hear crap coming out of each other's mouths. Shut it down. One woman shut me down one time, and this is a, a sentence that all of us should memorize. I never forgot it. I was, yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know why she, blah, 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 blah. why they, blah, 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 blah. and why it don't make no sense to me. Why, blah, 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 blah. And she said, she came up to me and she says, Pat, because she was the one I was talking to. And I said, yeah. And she said, um, I don't think this conversation is glorifying God. Slap my mouth. She slapped my mouth shut with those words. And we have to do it. We have to be willing to stop the devil from using us as a ventriloquist talking through a little wooden dummy. Do we love each other enough to shut our mouths when we could fly it open? Do we love each other enough to keep the door locked so we don't let the devil get a foothold in to bust the door wide open and wreak havoc? Do we love each other enough for that? Love covers a multitude of sin. It doesn't blast it on the, on the rooftop. It doesn't put it on the front page of the newspaper. It doesn't advertise everybody's flaws and everybody's shortcomings, everybody's idiosyncrasies that we just can't stand. Please, we cannot allow the devil's poison to wreak havoc in our church family. We cannot allow it. And listen, this is for those of you who have been victimized and you're wondering what's going on. God gave me a dream. Like I said, this is for the perpetrators and the victim. Now we're talking to the victims. Listen to this. The Lord gave me a dream. That's how I knew what the message was about. In the dream, one of my friends was at a cafeteria eating with her husband. I'm there with my father. My father's in the wheelchair. So my father has a great disposition. I'm going to tell you this. Years ago when I was taking care of him and he gave his heart to the Lord, one time in my whole life, my father switched, I mean, he switched character on me. He did a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde on me. I never saw that before. And when he did it, the third time, the Lord opened my eyes to the fact that I was dealing with a demon, not my father. And he was all nice that day. And when I went to give him a hug, he get the hell out of my face. He's getting... And I was like, where'd that come from? Did you think I was patronizing? I'm trying to understand. And the Lord said, ain't nothing to understand. That's the devil. And I was like, are you serious? So I said, I sat down. I said, Pop, let me ask you a question. Check this out, victims. Let me ask you a question. Were you angry when I hugged you? Yeah. Okay. Do you know why you were angry? Guess what his answer was? No. But you just got angry. Yeah. I said, now, do you remember when I was a little kid and you told me you believed in demons? Yeah. I said, do you think that might have been what that was? Maybe. I said, well, why don't we agree in prayer and rebuke it? And you say the words I tell you to say, okay? Okay. And I told him, say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, never to return. You will not have me turn on my daughter ever again in Jesus' name. He said the words, never happened again, never, till this dream, till this dream that I had. Now, in this dream, like I said, my friend was with her husband. I was with my father. And I said something jokingly, something like, see, can't take you nowhere. They just don't know how to act. You know, nothing big, you know, nothing deep, no insult. We're just clowning. 
And this person heard me say that before, but this time she got upset. She got offended. And I'm trying to explain to her, oh, I'm sorry, I, I was just joking. So now I have to go through all that. Then I asked my father something and he blows up at me. And I'm like, what did they? I said, uh-uh. I, I immediately recognized it because I saw it one time in my life before. And I remembered that. So I'm looking at him and I'm walking away. And I said, no, that's not my father. That's not my father. And now the friend that was bothered by what I said, she's trying to help me understand why he would get upset. I said, no, there is no understanding it. That's a demon. That's not my father. And I woke up. So I want you to know, if you have family members, that's what this story is about. If you have family members, if you have co-workers, church members even, yeah, whatever the case may be, and you are doing something pretty much innocent, harmless, and somebody just blows up on you like you have grown a tail and turned into a freak of nature. You, under your breath, you bind that devil in the name of Jesus and don't take it personally. Don't buy into the argument. Don't go for the dialogue. Let them stay with their monologue and you do battle under your breath. Don't be surprised if that stuff starts happening a lot. Just like Andrea said when they were trying to witness to people last night. Here we got people coming up, confronting and knocking Bibles out your head. Half the time, I bet you the folks didn't even know why they were doing that crap. Demonic. It's demonic activity. Satan will rise one person up against another one and neither one of them know what's going on. Watch and pray. Now that's your warning. Forgive. Don't take it personally. And like Lynn told me she did a while back, when she had a family member blow up at her, she sat down and asked him, what was that about? And you know, he didn't know. So I'm telling you, you need to be aware of all the ways. Be aware of Satan's devices. He will use his devices to divide. He will use his division to form schisms. Don't allow it. He's trespassing. Rebuke his behind, never to return in the name of Jesus and be done with it. Amen? And get back to loving each other, y'all, because that's what that's about. That's what this is about.